Hey, yo, what's the deal, my people? You know what it is. It's Don Toy Teflon, and I'm back at you with another one. And now that the trailer has been out for a little while, the season six trailer, I'm going to go through it again with you, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on why I feel about the trailer the way I do, and certain things, and give you my true breakdown on this. All right, let's drop it. All right, so we're going to jump it off with Jon Snow, and we start off with Jon Snow, and look, he's dead, dead, dead. Yes, that we see that he's dead. They want to make sure we know that he's dead and now this next shot that i seen i thought in the beginning that this was melisandre but but on further inspection you can see these are definitely man hands and that she does not it does the man hands do not have the ring that melisandre has later on that we sing on the feet fire but we do see a fire burning behind john's head so we can see thorn and his goons trying to break up in the room trying to definitely get to John's body and that's what leads Davos to grab the sword right here and definitely go after these cats. Now the things that's interesting to me here is you can see right there the guy next to Ghost is a guy who has long enough hair to be the guy that's put his hand over John's face and we can also see that John's body is now laying on top of Ghost. His head is laying on top of Ghost so they moved his body from the position that it was in before. Which leads me to believe there has to be some reason that they moved this man's body and put his head directly on Ghost. Ghost does not look alive or he does not look like he's in protection mode. Kind of like when uh, Bran was getting attacked. We don't see that same uh, fire in Ghost laying there. So it's quite possibly, as I have said before in other videos, that they may have to kill Ghost to bring John back. And I think that when you see the Melisandre pictures of her here, looking like she's about to seduce somebody, probably looks like she's maybe trying to buy time to resurrect John, and maybe she couldn't buy enough time to do it. And now they're trying to lock him in there and get this done now. Now sticking with the North, because I do believe that most of the action will take place in the North, and I think it's going to be the best part of the show this season. We get Ramsey and Roos, and there's no telling exactly which scene is going on here right now. But as I said before, Ramsey does look a little bit concerned to me, so things could be unraveling for them at this particular time. Now after that, we get this scene of a battle, and then let's get to this dude right here um, on the fillet cross. Now we know that there could be two possible people that are supposed to be filleted. I hear people saying that it can't be Stannis because Stannis' head was supposedly chopped off. But if you look at the angle from when Brienne supposedly killed him, it doesn't look like she could have chopped him off with his back against it, chopped his head off with his back against the tree right there. So I do think it could be Stannis, and it also could be Giants, uh, Tormont Giants being why well, I keep messing up that man's name. Uh, from what it looks like in the previews, it possibly could be him. I also think that uh, it could be somebody else. Who knows? It's got to be somebody else, but it could be somebody a little bit more important uh, than those two. Theon and Sansa look like the Ramsey or the Bolton men do catch up with him. And then we see that uh, Brienne is still in the north in her armor. And looks like she may catch up with them and save them. Here in this picture, we know it's not Brienne, but it could be uh, Pod. Um, it looks like it could be Pod, but we have not seen Pod. But that sounds pretty plausible that she catches up with them and saves them. If not, then I don't know what's going to happen with Theon. Uh, he could be killed, obviously. He's not dead in the books yet. But, you know, uh, it's at the point in the books where he could be dead. He's not really much needed. If he's not going to have him at the King's Moot, I don't think he's much more needed in the story. We don't get a lot of Sansa. Mostly looks like she looks like she's dressed like Peter Baelish. And Peter Bayless is probably going to come down and save the day with the Vale Army. As I said before, we get John. You see him leading the ch charge down there. And once again, I'll say it. I do think that the North, the Northern storylines will definitely be the most interesting part of this whole season. Moving on to the Tower of Joy, you know, I'm really excited about seeing the Tower of Joy. I definitely missed this the first time around. I wasn't even thinking about Tower of Joy. And when the guy came around, you seen him in the Targaryen armor, who we think is Sir Arthur Dame, I was not even thinking about Tower of Joy. That is why it slipped my mind. But now that I look at this picture of them, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to say this guy is such a great swordsman. And the only way to show it, I think they think they need to use two short swords to make him show how great he really is. But it only works for me if he does have two swords, if somehow 
he drop dawn or he picks another sword up but if he goes into battle with two swords that doesn't work for me i think uh to me the r plus l equal j thing is just about sewing up but i i don't think that that's what's important for me i am really looking more forward to what happened after the tower of joy i mean does ned really kill sir arthur dane is he really dead i i think he is but it's possibility that he's not uh will they show him go visit his sister will they show all that so i'm really interested in seeing more of the events after the tower of joy because to me the tower of joy itself is pretty much a wrap this is probably the most interesting scene in the whole trailer actually and it's down in King's Landing. So if this is the case and these are Varys' little birds, then it does look like this could be the death of Kevin Lannister. Uh, I know we see a lot of Jaime and Cersei and we see them Robert Stroh on the mountain or the undead mountain looking like he's about to hold it down. And we also see some stuff going down with the face militant. But to me, that all stuff is the stuff we already knew. And it's not really that exciting. To me, the most exciting thing is this little shot right here. This was what gets me up. I hope that this is the case, that this is the little birds killing Keevan Lannister. That's what it looks like. And if that is the case, then this probably will be happening probably episode 10 this season. Now the next interesting point to me is Arya and we see the wave kicking her ass and then after that much leads to her doing the White Walker leap. Now I know a lot of people have given me a lot of bullshit in the comments saying that Arya is not walking. I don't know how you don't see that she's walking so I'm going to break it down and show you exactly what I'm looking at. And you can see from this picture that it seems like her eyes are not blind and then in the next scene you see her eyes are blind so from that it seems like she is walking to me and that is the reason why i said i do believe she is walking at this particular time but what interests me most about Arya is how far are they gonna go how are they gonna do the mercy thing are they gonna have her get in trouble for what she's done and then she's gonna escape and then join up with is Ambaro and the Mercy group? Is that how they're going to have her do it? And have her hiding out there instead of her being sent there? Seems probably it could go down like that. But I am looking forward to Arya. Danny's storyline, let me tell you something. I think it's going to be the most boring this year. I don't see anything in this clip of significance for me to really talk about in the Danny thing. So I'm not really going to get too much in Danny at this particular time. I mean, will Tyrion release the dragon? Yes, that's what I think we're seeing. But, I mean, Danny's storyline, we're going to have some red priestess. And we're going to have some intrigue. But, you know, basically, until we get to the end with the harpy and situation like that. And if you ask me, it seems like the leaked script is pretty accurate up until this point. So it just doesn't seem like anything I don't know what's going to happen. The biggest thing I'm worried about Danny is... Is she going to be heading towards Restoros by the end of the season? That's the only thing I'm really interested in finding out with her. Next up is the Iron Board, and I'm particularly interested in seeing the Iron Board. And no doubt we're going to see the death of Balon Greyjoy this season. And then we're going to see Euron Greyjoy come and ascend the throne. Uh, the Sea Stone Chair of the Iron Board, without a doubt. I uh, don't see it going down any other way but that way. Uh, the only thing that does particularly uh, make me give some waiver is that if this is Yara, and it definitely does look like Yara, why they are making her a lesbian, I don't know. I don't see the reason why they do it. I hope they don't try to use that against her to make her not become uh, Queen of the Iron Islands because of it, but I really don't see any other reason for them putting that in there. Leading back to the north, as I said, it would be the most important thing. We see Bran, and he looks scared as fuck, and then after we see him look scared as fuck, we see the Night's King standing right there. I don't know if the Night King could see him. It would be crazy if the Night's King was in his dreams also, because this is basically a dream sequence or something that adds up that matter then that would be nuts because that would mean something big with the Night King. But I just think probably he sees him, Bran sees him, and from whatever he's seen uh, looking across whatever the plan of the White Walkers was, had him that scared. And then when he sees the Night King right there, it's just the icing on the cake. We also see what I think is uh, some type of wildling throwing some type of fire on the White in one of the scenes. But that's what I've seen from this two clips. 
Bran will probably just play the role of just showing all the stories. I don't know what else he's going to do. I just think he's going to talk to a lot of people and that's it. But uh, overall, as I said, great trailer. I can't wait for the season. Let me know what you think. Put it in the comments. So if you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this. Please spread this across the realm. And please subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace! And stay sexy.